All right, we've got the uh, chassis all cleaned up and it's refinished, uh, coated with clear poly. So now uh, we got that done, we can go ahead and do uh, some uh, internal work and get it squared away. Get this back over here out of the way. What we're going to move on to now is the um, is the uh, push button assemblies. Uh, all this this little assembly here is your uh, oscillator coils for your station tuning these here are all your antenna trimmers for each of the buttons uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to separate all three components uh, we'll re remove the wiring from the push button assembly and uh, get this isolated so that we can make a dip into the bucket and get the uh, contacts and everything scrubbed up uh, this here will be cleaned off with a brushing and this here will will uh, be brushed out with a soft brush to get the uh, dirt and crud out of the uh, the wafers on this on these trimmers and then we will uh, get it all back together and uh, start sliding it in piece by piece um, I still yet to recap the the chassis so uh, I need to go in there and do a search and destroy and then uh, we'll be back after we get done with that stay tuned all right uh, we've got these things separated out this one here has been in the bath and cleaned up uh, I use these little stainless steel brushes and soak these things in uh, a 50 50 mix of uh, simple green and water put them in a little tub scrub 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 and she comes out a winner okay that's that uh, the oscillator cores uh, once you get them dusted you can dust them with a with a cheap ass uh, brush from Home Depot pretty much what I use and you can brush these things down be real careful of the fine wire on the coils that connect to this rail and connects to ground this this is the grounded portion of these oscillator cores uh, these are the hot sections it goes to your one side of your your switch assembly and uh, in order to che double check and make sure that these things are what they should be connect you a, a lead from your multimeter have your multimeter set on tone and go through and separate these out and and check each one individually I don't know if you could hear that tone but I could <laughs> so and that's all that matters really uh, and so that's how you can check those coils so now we're going to move on to uh, to the uh, antenna trimmers and get them cleaned up and we'll be right back 
Okay, we got these cleaned up uh, using the same method, uh, a combination of a, uh, a cheap paintbrush, <coughs> a little uh, paintbrush, and, <coughs> and a um, stainless steel whisker brush. Be real careful uh, scrubbing the caps of these. Uh, do it very gently with the steel brush and you'll manage not destroying or obliterating each of the little mica wafers in here uh, and it'll clean up pretty good so now it's just a matter of of getting the uh, chassis ready to get the assemblies put back in and we will do that in layers uh, so stay tuned all right here uh, we've got the uh, the capacitor block taken out of the chassis uh, it has code on it 3903 ODG if you google Philco capacitor block uh, you'll get several hits on how to rebuild these uh, quite a few on YouTube I, I would imagine so I we're not gonna reinvent that wheel so there's what it looks like empty this ring up here and this first terminal section is your grounding points and uh, your Y caps will go from this one there will be two of them in here they will go from this one to that one and from that one to this one that is uh, across one side of each of the one side across the neutral one side across the hot so like I say google it and, and you'll get a bunch of hits on YouTube of, of how to build these you can even uh, they had different codes for each of the for various um, radios and uh, the, you, if you look up the 3903s and the ODG is one of the uh, configurations uh, it will show you how to what the block consists of anyway of how it's wired so we're going to shove our Y caps into here and get it back in the unit and then we're going to start wholesaling these capacitors out so see you then all right here we are about underneath the chassis we've got um, all the caps replaced uh, the push button assemblies back in and we've added an extra feature uh, the uh, we've got a bypass switch for the radio auxiliary input 3.5 millimeter input jack that connects in and goes to the switch so what this does is it breaks the input from the IF section and engages the connection to the the mini jack and brings it back into here so I gotta get me a label made up for this uh, up position will be radio down position will be jack everything else is pretty much intact under here we've got our electrolytics in 
had uh, one bad resistor on this can dome. The tail end one, the 140, 150 ohm was two and a half times its value. The other two were still intact. Pretty good value on it. So uh, we added in this strip to put this. I didn't have a, a two watt 150 ohm resistor so I added this in and I got 100 and about 140 ohms on this in this configuration and um, finished it off still got to take and check out the tubes uh, and flip it over excuse the shakiness and the jitteriness and everything else I've got to do this with one hand practically okay uh, we've got the can done uh, for the transformer new label on it we've got the fuse installed uh, fortunately the uh, push button switch is still intact I had it broke it had a lead broken off of it and I managed to salvage it Put new wire in for the uh, dial lamp this is going to get a new lamp in it this is for your band selection indicator and I got to get the uh, got to get the angle support and the the tuner back on it that is next doggy is telling me to get it get it going okay so stay tuned all right we're up to this point got the tubes checked out three tubes were really off I'm surprised it even worked at all no wonder the thing was off uh, replaced the uh, one of the oscillator tubes and two of the IF tubes all the ones down from the audio section are good and the rectum fire is good uh, we've got the dial housing and um, mount back on we've got it restrung uh, we've got the uh, tuner back on it uh, even got the uh, the gizzy thingy for the um, band indicator selection uh, restrung uh, this is all new dial cord it has a new whisker right here on the tuner uh, what else did I do mm-hmm it's about I guess that's about the size of it uh, I'm stroking the cabinet right now well maybe not right now but I it's being stroked not as we speak, but I got the preliminary brushing on it. Uh, the antenna is going to go next. The speaker uh, has an issue with the spider, as most of these vintage radios have from time to time. Uh, it had some cracking in three locations on the on the spider. Uh, I've got it. Uh, I've got some yeah, rubberized stuff on it. This is flexible stuff, even when it's cured up. Uh, on the cragging and the and the and the breaks in the spider, fortunately, it did not disintegrate. It was still intact, but it had cracks in it, and it separated from the voice coil. So I've got that taken care of too. I just got to. I gotta give it time to cure up, which is probably gonna be tomorrow before I can stick it on this thing and um, plug it in to the power supply and um, get it uh, checked out. So we're 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 getting close on this one. So stay tuned for more. <laughs>